Hello and welcome back Precalculites. We are continuing on with our fun-filled journey through trigonometry review. Uh, hopefully you know how to set up your sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. I told you we'd be solving for sides and angles using those. So it's kind of neat if you know just a couple items from a triangle, you can solve the whole triangle. But we're going to start with baby steps. So we're going to be doing uh, solving for si missing sides and missing angles of triangles given either uh, two sides or a side and an angle we can find the other things so hopefully you know your your soka toa sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent so here we go when you start out you are giving given a triangle like is pictured here with the x and the you got one side and an angle. This is why I was in, emphasizing that you always put sine of theta equals this over this because it's a sign of an angle. So you always have to incorporate the angle in there. The steps to solving for a side using your trig ratios is first off label the sides as they relate to the angle as adjacent opposite and of course hypotenuse is always hypotenuse. So I always start with the hypotenuse first. So if I look at number 1, 30 is the side that's opposite the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. Second step, set up your equation using your trig ratio, which relates the sides of the angles to the, a the sides to the angles. So you're setting up an equation. If I look, this is 50 degrees across the way is x, so I have opposite and hypotenuse. So you have to say which trig ratio is that? Is that sine? cosine or tangent, so ga toa. So so, S-O-H, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of an angle equals opposite leg over hypotenuse. So that's the one we're going to use. So then we have sine of 50. Theta is the angle. So theta becomes 50. And then you've got x, which is the opposite length, the opposite leg, and 30, which is a hypotenuse. Now at this point, if you have your graphing calculators out, make sure the mode is degree. If you don't get the answers that we get as we work these out, then uh, you might have the mode of your calculator wrong. There's two ways to measure angles, degree and radians. So check your TI-83 calculator right now, hit the mode button, it's near the top, and make sure that degree is highlighted, not radian. Okay, so in order to solve this, you solve this just like any equation. Sine of 50 is just some decimal, and this is x divided by 30. We're solving for x. Opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 30 to 30. So we got 30 on the left, 30 on the right. If you do that on in your calculator, you get 30 times 0 0.7660, but we have fancy calculators, so we don't have to go through this step. We would just get 22.98. That's approximately x. When you're solving for lengths of sides, rounding to the nearest hundredth or the nearest tenth is good enough. I'd probably say 23 for this one. Okay, number two. First step is to label the hypotenuse. So here's my right angle. Opposite the right angle is the hundred, so that's the hypotenuse. Then you have to ask x, how does it compare to the, si the, the angle, 70 degrees? If you notice, x forms a side of the angle. That right away gives it away. That's got to be an adjacent side. If it's opposite, it will not form part of the angle at all. And if you look at this angle, 70 degrees, the adjacent side along with the hypotenuse make that angle. All right, so adjacent over hypotenuse, so, ka, that's the one we need, ka, cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to have cosine of 70 is my adjacent, which is x divided by 100. Then I just multiply both sides by 100. 100 times cosine of 70. You can type that right into your calculator and hit equals, and you should get approximately 34.2. Again, if you're not getting these answers, it's because you might be in radian mode. And if you have a question about that, I'll help you tomorrow. All right, lastly, let's look at this one. This one is going to be a little bit different. Here's my right angle. So opposite the right angle is x. That's going to be the hypotenuse. If I look at 15 degrees, this is the side that I'm given, the 18. 18 is the value I'm given. Notice that it forms a side of that 15 degrees. 
So 18 is the adjacent. So we're going to use cosine again. But this time, the x is on the bottom. So a couple of ways that you can solve this one. I'll just show you the proportion method. Remember, cosine of 15 degrees could be written as cosine of 15 over 1 equals 18 over x. In a proportion, cross products are always the equal. So we would have x times the cosine of 15 equals 18 times 1. And then to get x by itself, just divide by the cosine of 15. So that's where I got 18 divided by the cosine of 15. That's going to give us approximately 18.63. Okay, that's how you use the side, how to find the side of the right triangles using the trig ratios. You're going to have a practice sheet on that tomorrow. Let's look at how to find the angles. So if we're looking for missing angles, always use the inverse functions. And if you look at your graphing calculator on the sine, cosine, and tangent button, there's a little sine to the negative 1. That means sine inverse. So it looks like sine negative 1, cos negative 1, tan negative 1, but that actually means sine inverse, not 1 over sine. So these are the inverse functions. So if you say that to yourself, when you're finding the angle, use the inverse, angle inverse, angle inverse. People always forget. So we start the same way. Let's label the sides we're given. And in order to find the angle using these uh, inverse functions, you need two sides. So we're going to label them. Here's my angle theta. We're trying to find the angle theta. So if I look here, the hypotenuse, that's 25. The 7, it's across the way from the theta. So that's the opposite side. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Let's set up our equation. Our sine of theta is going to equal 7 over 25. So to find theta, the opposite of taking the sine of an angle is doing the sine inverse. We know what the sine equals. In order to find the angle, we're just going to put sine inverse of 7. And then to get that division sign right here, use the division button on your calculator. So 7 divided by 25. Put that in the parentheses, hit enter, and you're going to get approximately 16.26 degrees. That's fine. We'll have other, we'll talk about you know, changing to minutes and everything later. But for right now, we're just getting the hang of finding these angle measures. All right, so let's look at the next one. Here's my theta. I'm going to label my hypotenuse. It happens to be 13. It's one of the sides we're given. And then the 5, it forms a side of the angle. So that theta is formed by the side of 5 and 13, They're those two sides. So it's adjacent. So in this case, we're going to use adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. So cosine of theta is like when you're taking the inverse, you take the inverse of both sides, and that cancels that out. Now, I kind of did the extra steps on this one to show you how that worked. But really all you need to know is you can go from this to this. So you can go from cosine theta equals 5 over 13 to theta equals cos inverse of 5 divided by 13. If you do that out, you get should get approximately 67.38 degrees. All right, so look at the last example that I have for you. Here's my angle. Hypotenuse is up there, but I don't have a value there. So I have the 4, which is across the way, that's opposite, and the 3, which forms a side of my angle, that's adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, that's tangent. So you'll have tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Now I forgot the theta there, that's bad form. But tangent theta is going to be 4 over 3. Remember your angle goes in there. And so theta is going to be tangent inverse of 4 thirds. And you'll get approximately 53.13 degrees. And that's it. So hopefully that was quick and easy. And we'll do the class work and the practice tomorrow. See you then.